Comic-Con Line is brought to you by the following sponsors. OasisComics.com, the home for J-Lee exclusive variants. ScottsCollectibles.co.uk, home for Alan Qua, Kel New, and many of the industry's top creators. ClamMcDonaldComics.com, the official CBCS facilitator for Comic-Con Line. AlphaOmegaCertification.com, the official CGC facilitator of Comic-Con Line. ArtGermCollectibles.com, the only place to find exclusives for ArtGerm, DCWJ, Kunkka, and Edukure. JJ'sComicArt.com, the home for all things Doug Mankey and some of some amazing original art deals. All right, guys, we are back, uh, and we're fixing to be joined by 3M, Tremonti uh, Michael Moore, yep. um, and, you know, a longtime friend of uh, Comic Con Line. Uh, the collector's corner and myself uh, on a personal level. So it, it's uh, uh, let's uh, go ahead and bring Monty on and see what he's been up to. Monty, he is. hey guys, what, what's going on, buddy? Another damn paradise. <laughs> so uh, you were uh, you were here for the very first Comic Con line. I, I think you were the very first guy to agree. I think you were the first one I reached out to. Right. Um, so uh, you know, right when COVID was like coming cr- crushing down on on the world yeah it uh it, it has been an interesting ride these last uh what uh, march to, to now yeah. um <laughs> it's been a while dude <laughs> yeah we've uh we, we, we we've been uh basically uh held to this new way of life for what eight months now give or take Eight years, it feels like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, so Eric Davis says, oh, uh, Monty. Albert says, hi, Monty. Um, what else we got? Uh, Karen Barry Walsh says, hi, guys. Um, hey, Karen, what's going on? Let's see. Uh, Jay Taylor says, what's going on, Monty? Well, so I you all these fans. Uh, are you revealing more of the Baroness? Uh, no, we have them up on the site right now, Albert. They are up at ComicConline.com, C-O-M-I-C-C-O-N-L-I-N-E. So there's two C's in there. Uh, there there's a comic online that's been uh, siphoning some stuff from us. So, it, uh, uh, you know, those things happen. Um, so <laughs> go there. Uh, I bought every uh, uh, website close to it except that one. And, of course, that would be the one. That, uh, yeah, it happens. Um, I, I think before long, people will be, uh, we'll be aware. Fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. Um, <clears throat> uh, Carol says, uh, Monty, Monty, Monty. Which uh, Carol? Uh, it says, Carol, uh, Nadeo. Yes, she's in Colorado Springs, uh, original art collector. She has some Xena art and some Lady Death. She bought a Red Sonia sketch recently. I've known her for many, many years. Fantastic. All right, so I guess uh, we will go ahead and uh, get into your time here. What, uh, what what have you been up to since the last Comic Con line? For anybody that hasn't had the opportunity to follow you, or just uh, for whatever reason decided not to at the time, and should probably start following you now, what have you been doing? Um, the biggest thing that we did was right after the first Comic Con line happened. Uh, I was on another podcast and, and we were talking about me finally launching local hero, which is my first creator owned comic book. And, uh, so I was not going to launch it due to COVID. It seemed like, well, maybe this isn't the right time. And really it was the comics community, uh, who actually said, no, like we're, we're ready. We want to support comics creators, uh, that sort of thing. So. Uh, here's an example of one of the covers that uh, was on that project. This is one of my uh, drawings that I did. And then I also had uh, lots of other artists like Jamie Tindall, Witchman, DeBalfo, Kincaid, Ebass, uh, a veritable cadre of uh, friends and fellow artists for Local Hero. And so we ran that campaign and uh, blew my expectations out of the water did 50,000 in sales uh, and then almost another 10 in post sales in in the uh, other period. And uh, just kind of fantastic. It really has changed my focus to be a little bit less about um, uh, 
do maybe doing quite so much freelance work and put my own writing and publishing efforts to the forefront a little more. Because when I was first putting together Loco Hero, it took me six years to actually publish it because I would go months and months and not work on it at all. And, you know, my art team would do a couple pages and they're like, hey, we're waiting on for you to approve this. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's, it's not a rush. You know, take your time. Uh, here's an example of some of the interiors. And uh, Loco Hero is, uh, the, the brief story is, it's about a, a woman who is a, a war veteran who lives on the streets who thinks she is a superhero. She does not actually have any powers and she lives in our regular world, right? So there's not super villains and heroes running around, but there is comic books. And actually the story references comics quite a bit. Uh, because she thinks she's a comic book superhero. Uh, so it's been fantastically well-received, well-reviewed. The fans have all loved it. And I got reviews like, this is my favorite comic book I've read in years. This is my favorite new character, things like that, because she's very grounded and it wasn't expected. And there was as much or more thought given to the story and the character as there was the art. It wasn't a a rushed project so to speak so correct me if i'm wrong but that is only the second time that your art has been featured on the interior correct so actually i did not draw the interiors uh okay. I, I hired an art team it was actually my second art team the first guy wasn't able to fulfill the project and i started over so um i am the writer creator but as of currently the only published book that i've ever done that was fully illustrated by me was a one shot 15 years ago called bloodlines that was a sci-fi <laughs> vampire story that was fully painted and it also took me years to do so i don't have any plans at the moment on drawing interiors because there are so many great artists out there as you know you work with so many talented artists from around the world who you know that's what their jam is and and mine as an illustrator is cover art and fine art and you know those pieces where i can spend 20 40 50 100 hours on one piece as opposed to saying hey i gotta do two pages a day you know and it's just not my forte it, it takes a different kind of person to do that kind of art man it, it really does you have to be fast you have to be willing to let go of quality and i know a lot of guys cannot do that like that they don't have it to, to let go of the quality. It's like, I put out this quality work. I'm going to put out this quality work if I do the interiors. So it's going to take my entire life to put out this book if you want me to do it. <laughs> right. Well, I guess for me, it's not so much as, a, I guess, quality. Because if you're hiring somebody to do pencils and or inks, they can do an amazing job. And it's high quality for what that is. And it's a different product than, say, a fully painted cover. So... I, I don't want to take anything away from the people who do amazing interiors because that's what their focus is. Whereas if somebody says, you know, for me to do that versus somebody else, it, it's they're both art, but it's not exactly apples to oranges because it's a different art form because their job is visual storytelling and a really mm -hmm. good visual storyteller. When I'm reviewing the pages, there's no dialogue on it. And I should actually be able to look at the page understand the story and not even be able to reference my script. And when I can do that and I know what's going on, I get back to them and say, Hey man, this page is amazing. You nailed it. I can tell what's going on. And there's not even any word balloons yet. So right, right, right now I have three stories, uh, uh, three comics in production in behind the scenes. And so I have outpost earth, which is a dystechian future sci-fi story. I have uh, a vampire Western called Blood and Bullets, which is uh, based on a screenplay that I wrote that's been optioned six times. And I have Loco Hero number two uh, in all, all in production, different pencilers working on each one. I mean, that, that's, that's awesome. I mean, you know, because when you and I first met, you know, it was just through the collector's corner and you basically you were solely a a cover artist most known for your stuff with coffin comics chaos comics um <clears throat> and various other uh uh indie uh publishers 
Yeah. Know, go from that. Gaming. So for like 10 years, I did, you know, magic and D&D and Harry Potter. So the gamers knew me outside of comics. The comics knew me as pinup guy, you know, motorcycles, you know, things like that. And then but, there's the, the traditional aspect of your art career where you are, I mean, for all, in, by all accounts, pretty much a world renowned fine artist. I mean, you are very recognized among even some of the comic artists that also, uh, venture into the fine arts recognize you. I mean, they, 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 I mean, you jam with some of the best of the best. Thank you. There's guys like um, Jerry Bingham, who used to draw Batman. He's pretty much a full-time Western artist now. And you, you know, look at his art and it looks like Remington and McCarthy and, you know, uh, Charles Russell and these great guys. And he doesn't do comics art anymore. Right. I mean, it, it, you're you're always on some retreat. I know, like when we first reached when I first reached out to you to get uh, the the cover for Steam Age Wasteland, you were on some. It was like a week long or two week long thing in Arizona, I believe it was. Ten weeks. Uh, ten weeks. Ten weeks. Okay. I have to go to Arizona for for uh, three months, and it's called the Arizona Fine Art Expo. And this will be my fourth year there this year and my third year as the cover artist. And there's a hundred artists from around the world and your booth is your um, studio and you work live every day for 75 days. Wow. So that's, I was doing bronze sculpture and painting. It was funny this last year because I had some deadlines and I'm at the fine art show and I was doing a painting of like Terminator versus the Transformers. And people would come by and be like, what is that? And so many people thought it was awesome. And they'd show their kids and they're like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing here. <laughs> <laughs> Getting fans early, man. Yeah. And and some of the comics fans, they know I'm there and they come out to the show to see me and, you know, have lunch and look at all the art that's not pop culture. So, yeah. you know, for me, all of that stuff helps me be a better artist. And every year while I've been down there, I've also gone and usually taken like a week long workshop from a, a wildlife or a Western artist that I really like who's teaching a workshop and it might be on watercolors or oils or who knows. And so this year I'm signed up with another artist yet again, who I've, I've never studied with and uh, I'll be taking a week long class with him. His name's Dustin Van Welchel. That, that's incredible. <clears throat> So what uh, what sort of stuff do you have to show off today? I know that you were, you uh, before we started your oh yeah there I remember you building that man I yeah. remember seeing so the work in progress as you pretty much put everything together. Yes, this is a bronze <laughs> sculpture, and you don't see too many people in the pop culture industry do you know bronze work. So this had to be sculpted out of clay and then cast in bronze. So that's just an example of a little bit of the fine art stuff. So, so let's see. I love how this art studio also looks like a mechanic shop. Well, I am in a garage, and <coughs> so, uh, my studio that's out here, like, uh, so that's a that's a steampunk. Whoop! That's a steampunk cabinet that houses a giant compressor, not only to fill up air, but if I also need to run air tools or high powered multi airbrush, I can. Um, so. Uh, I have a studio in the house, and then if I were to open that window, it would go into the actual garage bay where there are a few classic cars, but I also build custom frames and, you know, have tables out there, and it's a workspace, and there's a bathroom and all the trade show stuff that if I go to Comic-Con, I can back a trailer into the garage and load up all my stuff for my trade shows. Yeah, if you guys haven't been to his booth at San Diego Comic-Con, it is... Uh... It's quite nice. I think you rent like two spaces, right? You just got the one. Two. It's two spaces, and and I have had <clears throat> I have displayed at Comic Con until this year. Every year since '93, so this year would have been something like 28th or 29th appearance in a row or something. Uh, I, I think we can still count the in a row uh, when Comic Con happens again. So I, technically, I was part of the virtual Comic Con, and I did do a panel, so I was there. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> now, your booth last year was awesome. I, the Wonder Woman, the steampunk kind of Wonder Woman thing that, that you had going, that was uh, 
That was beautiful. I, I know. You, don't you have some prints of that available as well? Josh is going to hand me one here, right? I have a, a, a gallery wrap canvas. This one is about half the size of uh, the actual original. And I was going to showcase it at San Diego, which I did, but I showed it online first and the original sold before I ever left for San Diego. So yeah, that's, it, it that's was. The steampunk Wonder Woman that had a big custom steampunk print on it. So that is. That is amazing. Those are available, yeah. I actually, uh, of those, you, that's printed on canvas, yes? Yeah, that's what we call a gallery wrapped canvas, so it's stretched on a frame and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I actually had you send me one of your uh, uh, your steampunk fairy. Uh, I can't remember what the name of the, the actual piece is, but I haven't been able to find a good uh, frame yet. I may just have to build myself one. Luckily, I'm good with my hands. But that thing, as soon as I find a good frame, it is going above my bed directly center above my bed because my whole house is steampunk. I, I love it. I didn't like it until we did steam age wasteland. And then <laughs> ever since then it's a, the, the, the bronze and the black and all the other colors that, that, that work so well together. I, I, I'm stuck on it. Yeah, I did. Uh, I have a motorcycle <laughs> in my basement and I took an old Moto Guzzi and I steampunk the entire motorcycle. So it's basically been retired from functioning and it's now an art piece in a motorcycle sized art niche in the basement next to the bar. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah. I actually, I think you showed us or you showed me at one point. I don't remember if you showed it on Comic-Con line, but I, I know you showed me at one point the, yeah. where it's at the case stand. Yeah. If people go to just my regular page and they click on photos, you'll see an album and it'll say steam goozy and you can see the whole evolution. Like, you know, 60 pictures of me basically tearing it down and rebuilding it from a cafe racer into something that looks cooler than, you know, Captain Tomorrow or whatever it was. Um, it, it's pretty badass, I got to admit. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. So uh, <laughs> Marcus says, uh, hashtag goals. That's awesome. <laughs> I think that Laura, uh, when she wanted to actually finish the basement, which I tried to put off for over a decade because I got to store all my crap there, that she was like, over here next to the bar, there's going to be this niche. And I was like, what do you mean motorcycle niche? She said, you can put a motorcycle in it. I was like, all right, I'm sold. Well, I'll put a motorcycle in it then. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I guess we can finally do the basement. It's only been 17 years. <laughs> The problem is it took like seven loads to the dump to get all the stuff that I had stored down there. I oh, gave away man. a bunch of stuff to comic book shops like, hey, do you want some display shelves? And a, I actually had a life-size coffin display case that I gave to one of the guys here in town. That's incredible. <laughs> so what uh, what else do you have to, to show us uh, today? We, you know, I know you had some, some items prepared to show everybody. What, uh, what, do, what do you have for sale today? Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to move over uh, here to my right and we're going to go through some of the comics, not only from Local Hero, there's going to be some Vampirella, some Lady Death, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, some exclusives that I've done that have come out kind of in the last six months. And most of these are just a few remaining copies. Uh, a couple of the books, I told the publisher, hey, don't even pay me, just give me extra books, you know, to yeah. sell. So you know, I would get maybe 30, 40 books that I could sign. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to move here in the studio. We're going to relocate uh, here in just a minute. And uh, we're gonna just, uh, make your screen a little bit bigger. Okay. So we're going to move over there. Moving around the studio here. <laughs> Corey will probably like the big Punisher poster there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that one last time. <laughs> Lights up and everything. Right, it does. Okay, so give me just a sec. Hopefully I'm not making everybody. Uh, Josh, you might have to help me here. All right, I'm going to move over here to the right, and then we're just going to have it come in on. Okay. And I, I do want to tell you guys, if anything you buy here and you want it graded, 
uh, you know, we, we can provide those services for you either through CGC or CBCS. Um, you know, wh whatever you guys want, uh, we can take care of it. Uh, Monty does have some nice covers, man. I, Thank you. I see something shiny right there. <laughs> There's definitely some foils here. Yeah. So what we're going to do is, as you guys can see stuff in the background, if you want Alpha Omega grading to uh, do anything, then I'll have Joshua with me here in the studio and he can take notes and people can claim in the comments section. They can message me uh, or, you know, uh, Corey can read it out. At the moment, I don't see any, I don't see the comments. We're also offering, uh, I have them over there on the side. When they, someone claims them, I'll let you know. Okay, now I can see them. I can see Brian. <coughs> Okay, great. We also offer CVCS through Clay McDonald Comics. What's that? Um, so we like to give everybody an option. Okay, great. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to blow through some comics here. We've got about half an hour left. And then if there's time, we'll do some prints and originals as well. Okay. okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, Loco Hero number one. Uh, there's a bunch of different versions of this. These are variant covers. And so if you need specific pictures, you can let me know. Uh, but this is the honor bound cover. And this goes to benefit our veterans who are fighting PTSD. And so $20 from every one of these books, which are priced at $30, goes to uh, our veterans. And then the rest just covers the cost of the book and the shipping. Uh, so that's Loco Hero number one. Uh, this is called Honor Bound. Uh, that's, there we go. There's a better angle. And um, this one, these books can be signed or unsigned, uh, raw or graded. So I'm going to set that aside. Uh, we're going to do all the Loco Hero books first. This is the uh, Mike Chrome Ula Moss cover for Loco Hero number one. This is the foil, uh, hollow foil. And uh, all the hollow foils are priced at 50. And uh, there's a number of different foils that are here. Uh, these books are currently unsigned. So if you want Mike or Ula Moss to sign them, uh, you can do that on your own efforts. Uh, but I can sign them as the writer or creator. So that's the Mike Chrome Ula Moss cover. This is the hollow foil version of the E Bass and more. This is the foil version. This is the first ever collaboration that I have done with Eric Basildura, Ebass. So he drew it and I did the painted version. Uh, the original art is also available on my uh, website and my personal page. I have both the pencil and the painting available of that one. Uh, how much for the Han Solo and Carbonite in the background? Well, that's priceless because that's actually an original cast from the... Uh, from Empire Strikes Back, so he's not for sale. It would um, cost uh, your firstborn and uh, uh, amongst yeah. other things. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. It's more valuable than Beskar. Um, so this is the Jesse Witchman and Seven did the colors. Uh, this is the hollow foil version of the Witchman. This was actually probably one of the most popular covers. You can tell this is very sexy. Uh, from Loco Hero. Uh, and this is the foil version. So those are 50. A couple of those in stock. Uh, this is the eBass pencil here. Uh, this one I can sign as the creator as well. But this was one of the only versions that I decided to actually do with uh, publish it as the pencil version as well. So this one's kind of uh, uh, a more rare one uh, for that. So we have those available. Uh, this is another one of the uh, Monty Moore only covers. So this features my pencil drawing. And in the story, there's a scene where she kind of, you know, sheds her regular street clothes and she dresses up as what she thinks is a superhero and puts on ski goggles and fighting wraps and this outfit that looks like it's from 1980s Jazzercise because she thinks that's what heroes wear. And that comes from the donation bin and the shelter where she volunteers. So uh, this cover here is called Barely Sane. And that features my pencil drawing. Uh, that's one of the few covers I kept for myself that I did not offer the original art for sale. 
this one here is called uh, Midnight Marauder. And the art team on this one is actually the same art team that did the interior work of the book. So Donnie H. and Sean Callahan are the pencil and colorist. And so you can see the caliber of work on the inside of the book is also shaped based on the cover. So both of these guys also got two covers. This is the hollow foil version of Midnight Marauder. And then one of the final ones from Local Hero. Uh, this was an artist I found online. Uh, I love his work. Uh, his name's Michael Magalanis. Uh, and uh, he did a great job on this. And then this one was colored by Sanju. And so this one's called Battle Brina. And this is one of the hollow foil books that we just got back from the campaign. So we overprinted the print run around 10 to 20% uh, to account for damage and chipping. So now we're starting to get all of those back from uh, our shipping. Uh, here's a new debut. I have not offered these before. This is the hollow foil pencil version of my first and only art for Ryan Kincaid's Persuasion title. He recently had a Kickstarter. Uh, so this is the hollow foil version of my, this is an artist proof. The artist proof books run 100 to 150. So I have five of these available. This is the first time this is ever being offered. I have not shown or offered these before. And there's also the colored version. These are also artist proofs. So up here in the upper corner, uh, I think on this side right there, there is an MMM has my initials on it. So that indicates the artist proof book. And this one here, the colors were done by uh, Sanju and did a fantastic job doing the coloring. And uh, so that's the color version for Persuasion, my first one of those titles. Uh, here's two more books. I have not offered these APs before. I just got these in not too long ago. I think it took like a year for Big Dog to fulfill on their Antoinette Kickstarter. Um, so this is the headless version of the AP. And so this is the Marie Antoinette. And there's also the version where you can see her head in the comic. They're both 150. These are the artist APs. And if somebody wants both of these, I can get a discount on them. Uh, so let me know if one of those interests you on the Marie Antoinette. Uh, this is the final book I have available of this one. This was very popular last year. And one of the websites rated this as one of the best covers from last year. And this is uh, for a title called The Sav, The Savage. And um, this is the only time I've ever done a tribute cover, ever. And uh, they have- it, It's a hell of a cover to tribute. It, it really is. Well, and you know, I normally when people ask me to do tribute covers, I say no because that's not really my bag. But when somebody asks you to do a tribute, whoop, to Frank Frazetta and tribute the Death Dealer and take their character and put it on a white buffalo, you're like, well, that's kind of hard to say no to. So down here, you can see it actually does say after Frazetta. And I asked his granddaughter the, the sort of her blessing on this, and, and they gave it. So that was very cool of them. Uh, that's the way it should be done. You see a lot of these guys, they'll do that stuff and they won't put after anything. They just do it. And that's what it is. You know, that, that's oh, one of the like, things that, that we've yeah, had. Oh, it's another, you know, Spider-Man 300 tribute. And you're like, come on, you know, but each for their own. Um, this yeah. is actually not the full book. Um, you can't get the, you can't buy the, the, um, the book of this one uh, because you can only get it in my local hero tier where you got all the covers but i do have a couple of the metal prints and this is called more west than one and there's nine different pop culture movies referenced in the art from once upon a time in the west and west world old and new uh wild wild west van helsing quite a few so uh there's a few of these metal comic size prints left those are 40. Uh, let's see what we got on the top row here. We've got, um, uh, this is my only Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cover I ever did. Uh, this one was for Mile High Comics. And this was a uh, kind of a collaboration that I did with them. And so I got some of the books as part of it. And this is issue 100, which was their big issue where they had a lot of 
kind of heavy hitter names. So I altered it all four of our favorite turtles, of course, jumping into action. So the original, <laughs> all of that has sold. Um, this is a cool piece. This is, um, I haven't done a cover for Image Comics in about 20 years. Um, let me take one of these out of the container because they're especially shiny. Um, so this is Undiscovered Country, number one. And this is kind of their new title that maybe is set to replace Walking Dead. And so, yes, I have a guy riding a shark with freaking laser beams attached to his head. I mean, because why not? Uh, uh, well, yeah, when you have that opportunity, you should. And, uh, if you're in the future or some kind of dystopian future, I would want to ride a shark. I'm not lying. It's kind of dystopian, post-apocalyptic, a little steampunk thrown in. And uh, again, the first cover I've done for Image in 20 years. I hadn't done one in, in a long time. I'd done a couple in the 90s. And um, so that was really cool to be asked to be a part of that. And that's an issue number one. Uh, as many people know, a lot of my Lady Death books sell very quickly. And so I have very few left. Um, so this one is not an artist proof. It's 50. And this is the Sworn Nation cover, the I Want You, the Sworn Nation. Uh, so I do have some copies of that one. Uh, here's another debut. I have not offered these books before. Uh, this was uh, super popular from Brian's last Kickstarter. And this is the La Muerta cover for that's called the Dark Reaper. And this is based on my pencil drawing that was then colored by either Sanju or CC De La Cruz, I think. Uh, this is one AP books, but it's still signed. So it doesn't have my initials on it. Uh, so I have 10 of these books available. And I have not made these available yet to the public. So Comic Con Lines getting a bunch of first offers here. Uh, Amanda Theralt of Claims a Turtles book. Absolutely. We'd love to do that. Josh will get that noted for you. Uh, so let me Thank set you so that much, up. Amanda. You're amazing. Yeah. And I have two copies of this one left. I just got these in two days ago. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an AP book. It does have my initials on it. It's the Halloween edition. I got five copies. There's two left. Um, I drew the original art live on uh, Brian Polito's Coffin Comics channel for their event, which was called Crucial Con. And so I drew it live in one hour, and then it was turned over for coloring to Antonio D. He did the coloring that night, and then the next book, it was off to the printer. So there are two left of the Lady Death Instant Edition Halloween. Uh, all of these books come with a Monty Moore uh, uh, COA, and uh, Josh can hand me one of those, and I'll show you what the COA looks like. Uh, so that one was Lady Death. Um, we've got an Elvira here. I've got a few left of these. Whoop. Man down. I whacked the camera. Um, Marcus uh, Men Men Mendelson asks if you have any of the regular uh, Ebass cover left for Local Hero. Uh, yes, I don't have them uh, out yet. I just got uh, two boxes, well, six boxes in from the Kickstarter. And so I would imagine that we have the non-foil available in those boxes. So, okay. uh, Josh, if you want to note Marcus Mendelson, we can reach out to you and let you know if we have those. This is an example uh, of my personal COA. And I write down what the book is right here. It gets my signature. And then it gets a 3M embossed uh, crimper stamp that goes on the corner of each one of these. And all of the books come with these. Uh, my personal COA. Uh, Brian asked for a Lady Death AP Halloween, please. Um, and asked if you were doing remarks. Uh, yeah, so the remarks are 40 each. And we can add those to any book or print. I'm happy to do those for you. So just note that, uh, Brian, we will put you down. Brian is one of the, uh, facilitators, uh, for alpha omega. So if you want to get something CGC, he can certainly help you with that as well. Um, and then Tanya Shadwick, wow. uh, like the La Muerta signed with COA. Absolutely. Uh, we'll pull one of those aside for you. 
Um, that one will be for Amanda. I, I um, did you get the Eric Davis Lady Death? I want you. Which one? The the uh, the Uncle Sam uh, homage. I, it, Who would like that one? Uh, he wanted that one and the Halloween also. Uh, Eric Davis. It's a couple comments up. Oh, okay, great. I I will pull that one. Out right there. Yeah. Okay. He wants those graded. Okay, fantastic. Um, so this book here is the Elvira, uh, also number one. This was from Dynamite. Uh, this book is thirty. Uh, the only time I painted Elvira, uh, most of you know that a good portion of my covers are all fully painted. Uh, they're not, uh, a lot of them aren't necessarily covered. I'm the only artist on them. So, uh, that's an example outside of the, uh, uh, Jeffrey, you will just claim here. If you claim what you want here, uh, we will message you, uh, either us, Alpha Omega or Monty and his crew will message you to find out whether you want it signed and or graded after sure. the fact. Yep. Yep. I think to, to make things a little bit easier. Uh, price for the undiscovered country. Uh, yes. So that is, those are 30 because it's not specifically an AP. It is a virgin. So these uh -huh. would be the same price as turtles. So sorry, I missed that on there, but those are 30 for undiscovered country. Uh, so we can, uh, if you want one of those, let us know. Or Josh is also watching uh, here. He's logged in as Wes Fuller. That's one of my, one of my accounts. Yeah. And we are taking notes of everybody that requests a book, what book they request. And just in case anybody missed one, uh, either Monty or uh, Alpha Omega, we're, everybody's going to get exactly what they asked for. We'll right. make sure. So here's the piece. Okay, great. Both Halloweens are claimed. This is another one of the uh, books that I did as a limited. This is also a number one. I'm going to take it out because these Mylars are crazy shiny. Um, so this is Terminator versus Transformers, number one. These are 30 each. Uh, these were books that I did with Scorpion Comics. They can be graded. They have not been handled until just now. They uh, come with a COA uh, and it even has a sketch cover on the back. So if somebody wants a remark, uh, I can do that. Josh, do you want to grab that book over there that has that Terminator? Um, I can show you one that has a nice remark on the back uh, that is underway and available, um, depending on uh, if somebody wants something more detailed or not. Here's an example of the Terminator Transformers number one. With <coughs> a real nice head sketch on the back. So a book like this would be 70 uh, $40 for the remark on the back. And then, of course, you get the Virgin uh, cover on the other side. So this is Transformers versus the Terminator number one with a hand-drawn remark. Uh, claim undiscovered country, please. Absolutely. Thank you, Carol. Uh, Jim, just make sure we know which book you're talking about. Oh, claim undiscovered. Got it? Yep, we've got it down. Thank you. Uh, Karen would like uh, La Muerta for Jeff, signed and remarked. Absolutely. Thanks, Karen. And by the way, I just sent something in the mail to you guys. Uh, okay, so we're going to come up here. This was a super popular book that I did with Comics Elite. Now, this is a naughty and nice. This is an artist AP. I can also do a remark on it as well. And this is a much more original illustration that uh, I sort of naughty and nice as a cover. And uh, I would say this book and the hardly, hardly thin that I did were probably two of my most popular covers uh, for kind of during COVID. And I'm going to open this one up and show you because it's a wraparound cover. So here's the front and she rolls on to the back and you see the, the complete illustration. I'm going to be very careful on how I open it, but you can see the entire piece of art there. And uh, I have three or four of these left and these are a hundred each. This is the naughty and nice uh cover and this actually has an mmm here in the corner and that's an ap 
uh, one of 19. So I have a few of those left. Uh, moving on to Vampirella. And this is, uh, this was for the very first Vampirella that Collector's Choice did, uh, a retailer variant for them. This is 30, and this was part of the Vampirella relaunch number one. You can see the one up here from Dynamite. So we've got a few of those. That's Vampirella number one by me. And it's funny because over the years, I've actually been, I've been on a couple of Vampirella number one, which is kind of funny. Um, got a couple of other books left over here. This was a newer one. This is an artist proof. This is a hundred, and this That's is a new. Here, buddy. This is the not whoop. Trying to make it so it's not blurry. <clears throat> this is the naughty and nice with the 1906 or 1977 Corvette behind it, which is how my car used to look, but I repainted it black. Now it looks like the Batmobile. But that's pretty much my car in the background. <laughs> So this is a naughty and nice. There's three or four left of these. They're APs. This is number eight here in the corner uh, for the naughty and nice. Uh, I've got one more of the naughty and nice. It's a fantasy art cover. And I've got this in both the virgin version uh, with and without logos. This is another one of my pieces of, fam of uh, fantasy art. Uh, Karen, Jim, claiming some Vampirellas right on. Uh, Perry, yes, there's local heroes at the beginning of this. There's eight different local heroes. So just go back and watch the earlier version, and then you can message uh, me for uh, which ones you would like, uh, because there are a number of the local hero, uh, hollow foil and non hollow foil. So on. These are both APs. This is the virgin and the non-virgin. This is the cosplay variant of the blonde and naughty and nice. Those are available. Now I got a couple of older books here that are over a decade old that aren't on my website. There, there's only a one off of them. So if you want it, you have to claim it. This is a metal book. This is a metal cover for uh, Naughty and Nice number five, the Monty Moore Metal Edition, number four of only 15 made. It is numbered. It's 100 bucks. There's a number right down here in the corner. That's an AP. It's a metal cover. And these were the very first metal covers ever made of mine. And this is definitely 10 or maybe 15 years old. It's definitely a naughty edition, as you can see there. Rather risky. Uh, claim naughty four. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> there's one more of these books that's also available. It's also a naughty and nice. It's also a metal book. This is number 14 of 15 as well. These were kind of from my personal collection. Uh, this one's 100. It's a metal cover. It's the Christmas steampunk naughty and nice from many years ago this is a number 14 of 15 uh for this and this is also 100 so if somebody wants the naughty and nice christmas steampunk metal cover limited edition ap if that's enough description that's a lot um 2012 is when this came out it looks like 2012 Quite old, but in great shape. These ladies hold up well. Uh, and I've got one more of that one. Uh, this is one of the few books that I have graded available. This is, I used to have about 40 of these. And over the years, they all sold. This is the last one. This is a 9-8 with a remark, naughty and nice. Uh, one of the first covers I ever did for them. This was a Will's Bargain cover. He was a variant. So this is number 69 of number 69. Yeah. So not only is it the last one, but come on, people. It's 69. That, that's a huge win right there. I mean, yeah. it, that. And it, so it's a 9-8, naughty and nice, number three, version two. Um, Albert is asking about La Muerta. The La Muertas are 50 for the La Muerta. 
if that's so I got 10 of these in uh, this book was limited to 159 copies so that one is and I can do a remark on any of the books for 40 if you're interested this is a one last shot I have an entire box of books that I have held back over the last six months so that I can remark them and have them graded uh, but I have not sent them in yet. So uh, that is going to be it for the comics. Um, we have about 10 minutes left. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some Lady Death prints. So we're going to come over here in the studio. We're going to move just real briefly. And we're going to reposition. Uh, you'll have, yep, this will be just fine. Okay. Uh, Josh, do me a favor since we're getting a, um, or maybe just take, turn off the overhead light. So I think there's enough natural light just cause we're trying to minimize glare here, but, uh, doo -doo. Okay. there you go. It's a good view. Okay. So what uh, we're going to blow through these pretty quick. These are all going to be coffin comics, uh, lady death. Uh, prints and so uh, you'll have to just I don't know all the names of all of them so you'll just have to send a description of what you like. Uh, um, Matthew Baldwin asked what the remark on the uh, 69 of 69 was. Yep. So on this particular book what it is is the all the lace work that you're seeing there kind of on the lower breasts and things like that rather than drawing a separate little image all of the little filigree in here is all hand drawn as it comes down on the character. And, and so, that's one of the things you'll notice guys, if you are a first time Monty Moore buyer, he doesn't do a traditional, like draw a little head on the, the cover kind of thing. He will alter the image uh, of the original art. Um, like on a, uh, there was a metal cover that was a relief for, uh, I can't remember who it was, but we, we had that done at uh, San Diego Comic-Con last year. Rather than drawing something on there, you changed the rivets to a different color. Uh, yeah. So one of a kind, I mean, it, that, that's classified as a remark, as a, as a, a, a artist-altered image. And that's, you know, essentially what a remark is. It's just a little more subtle. I can do the head sketch if that's what people want. And, you know, a lot of the local hero remarks were all the head sketch. Um, but a lot of times I just try to find a way where I'll draw different lace or filigree so that it makes it part of the art. Okay, so we're going to, we got about uh, 15 or 20 different prints here. Uh, this is the hard rocker. Now, all, of the, the prints are, of, that. All, of the, all the prints are 11 by 17. They're from Coffin Comics. These are their prints. I don't make prints outside of their, their printing. The prints are 30 each, two for 50. And I can do a remark on them as well. So if that makes sense. So uh, that was the, the first one here. This is, uh, the name escapes me on that one. Echo, moon Echoes. So Moon Echoes. This is the Hard Rocker. Uh, this is another new print that I have not offered and is not on the site yet. This is the Dark Reaper, La Muerta. So these are brand new, just came in last week. But there's also some that people haven't seen for a while. This was the exclusive for uh, Fiend Fest last year. Uh, that is my drawing. We've got a Hell Witch here, Naughty Edition. There is Saucy. It is not edited. A remark on her. Uh, your this was for uh, Corey's buddy Michael Stevens. This was uh, a charity benefit sketch that benefited a medical. <coughs> uh, you remember when the girl got hit by the car and she was in the hospital? Yeah, that was uh, Mike. Uh, uh, Michael Stevens. Stephen? No, there was the, the 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 guy the the benefit was for a, an old DC artist Mike DiCarlo, who oh, is okay. responsible for the cover that you know first where Lobo first appeared. Um, okay. He you know, he's done, he's worked with he did the uh, the, uh, the the death of the family. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Daytona. Inked all that. His, his wife got hit at, I think it was an Oregon convention or a Washington. Oh, yeah. Seattle. Seattle? Okay. So the Emerald City, I think it was. His wife got hit by a car. And uh, he's been dealing with that for some okay. time. Okay, we got five minutes left. This is the Forbidden cover. This is probably one of my most popular covers. Also, the first one that was ever published by Coffin Comics. Forbidden. And a and is a beast to find. It is very hard to find that cover. And if you can, you're going to pay for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen people have that one for a freaking fortune online. <laughs> um. So this was about the, sec the second or third cover that was published. Sorry, I have notes in here about how many prints are available. Um, so uh, I don't remember the name of this one. You can call it Black Lingerie. Uh, so this, uh, these are all going to be Coffin Comics Lady Death. Uh, this is the Reaper, not the Dark Reaper. This is the Reaper edition. Uh, Lady Death with the hands of hell kind of reaching out for her fine figure. Again, any of these can get a remark on them as well. Uh, looks like there's a few more of the Moon Echoes print. Uh, this was the exclusive for New York City Comic Con. This is called Liberty or Death. This one was digitally colored and she's throwing up the rocker, the rocker horns. That's Liberty or Death. This was the very first piece of art that I did that was going to be published. This is called Statuesque, but the forbidden cover for Emerald City actually came out first. Uh, so that's Statuesque. Uh, that's the black lingerie again. We already saw that one. Uh, this one's called Lingerie Number One. This was, uh, they had an uh, art book that was lingerie, and this was the cover for lingerie book number one. And as we wrap up things here, we'll go through kind of quickly. Uh, this is called Wolf's Bane. She's sitting on a giant thing of uh, Wolf's Bane rum. That's Lady Death. I drew that at Megacon Live uh, is when I did the drawing on a sketch cover. Uh, this is uh, La Muerta. This is the club scene. Kind of a clubber hanging out, holding out the money and such. This is the instant edition from Fiend Fest. The, I did the hair, Mike DeBalfo drew on it. Uh, several <clears> other <throat> artists, Jason Jensen did the colors. Uh, we've got the, the Halloween edition that just came in. So we've got some of those prints for the naughty Halloween. Uh, those just came in. And then the very last print of the coffin prints is La Muerta. And this is the Kiss of Death art. So there you have it. So we didn't get through the original art. Uh, oh, but what we're going to do is we're going to show you a piece of original art. And we're going to talk just real briefly about Montage, which is my current Kickstarter that is online right now. I'll just go ahead and hold this guy here. And this is the original piece of art that I'm currently working on. And this art book is going to have art in it that is Western, pop culture, wildlife, and automotive. So it's kind of got a steampunk, pop culture vibe. It's mixed media, watercolor, airbrush, and marker. And this is going to be the cover to the book. Amazing. Some of the details in there as it focuses. So that's all in progress. And montage is on Kickstarter at the moment. Uh, we've got about 15 days left, two weeks left on the campaign. And uh, people can get original art commissions. If you want a sketch cover from me, I encourage you to go to the montage Kickstarter and pledge there because that's where I'm offering my current commission art slots. There's some original art that you can get through there. You can get some of these books that you saw here, just a couple of them. Uh, you can get past art books. Uh, Josh, do you remember what any of the other t-shirts? Uh, yeah, we got t-shirts, Monty Moore swag uh, with the new logo. We've got other fun products coming out like these little stickers and, uh, uh, I think they're actually the sample of the socks, believe it or not. Boom. Check out those. Those are oh. socks, y'all. 
<laughs> Monty, if, uh, if you want to shoot me over the link to the Kickstarter, I'll get it posted to the Comic Con line uh, social media pages. Uh, okay. To try and help out. Um, Josh, can you for any creator that's been featured on the show, if you're watching this, if you have a Kickstarter or doing a Kickstarter, we'd be happy to promote it for you. We 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 want you guys to to. We love create our own projects. We right. want them to do well. Right. Well, the 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 nice part is is that it it um, it puts the creativity in the hands of us as creators, and it allows us to control the quality of the product the, when it comes out. It you know in the past you just always had to turn over your creative part of that to a publisher. And then sometimes when the book or something came out, you went, wow, they used crappy paper or they cut out part of the art or they didn't include the writing or they didn't attribute the artwork. I've had it all happen to me where even covers would come out and go, you know, you guys forgot to include my name on that. And when you get to do creator own projects like Loco Hero or Montage, you get to make sure it's done right. And so that's one of the just awesome things about today's, you know, social media platform. So. So uh, right here on the screen, guys, you will see the, uh, the link to the Kickstarter. Um, yeah, you can't click on the link, but if you can copy and paste that. He messaged it to me. Oh, he messaged it to me also. So we'll get that posted to Comic-Con Live. We'll get it posted to Twitter, the IG, and the uh, Facebook page uh, for you guys. And hopefully we can get you a few pledges out of it. Um, yeah, that would be great. People can follow me on Instagram at MavArts. The MavArts is short for Maverick Arts, which is also my website. And you can send me a friend request uh, here on social media. I, I I recently cleared out some some older dead profiles so that there's room for me to access, accept some friend requests. So if you're not following me already, uh, you can send a, a, a request to Monty Michael Moore, or you can follow the artist page at Monty M. Moore. Right. Well, Monty, again, man, I want to thank you for coming on and being a part of this. Uh, very happy to be able to talk with you again. We don't get to talk enough. Um, and, and this is kind of, you know, my opportunity to get to talk to the people that uh, I've been connected with over the years. So it's uh, it's been a pleasure, man. Uh, you know, maybe, you. maybe in the future we could do something for the next show, uh, maybe an exclusive or something. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's hook that up ahead of time. So there's plenty of time. And then uh, um, I will, for those of you who have pledged things here, we'll get all the information to uh, through Corey and Josh and uh, Brian Weeks. And we'll make sure that things get off to CGC or Clan McDonald for whatever grading you want uh, and or remarks and uh, we'll make it happen. All right. Uh, well, guys, uh, that's going to be it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, for this uh, little bit of time we have here. And uh, stay tuned for uh, our sponsors, which we will uh, read up here in just a second. And after that, I believe we have Dan Mendoza, correct? Yeah. yeah. So uh, a, a bunch of the, the – the, it's been a, a big Coffin Comics kind of uh, related day, uh, which, you know, I love, you know. Uh, but anyways, uh, Monty, we will, uh, we will see you soon, man. Thank you, Corey. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for everybody for their support. Expect more. All right, guys, uh, and now stay tuned for the sponsors. Uh, and after the sponsors, this time we're not going to pop up in the frame again. We're going to be off. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we come back up, you will see Dan Mendoza. Dan Mendoza. Comic Con Line is brought to you by the following sponsors OasisComics.com, the home for J Lee exclusive variants, ScottsCollectibles.co.uk, home for Alan Qua, Kel New, and many of the industry's top creators. ClanMcDonaldComics.com, the official CBCS facilitator for Comic-Con Line. Alpha Omega Certification.com, the official CGC facilitator of Comic-Con Line. ArtGermCollectibles.com, the only place to find exclusives for ArtGerm, DCWJ, Kunkka, and Edukure. JJ'sComicArt.com, the home for all things Doug Mankey and some, of, some amazing original art deals.